Hello, everyone. Hello, group. Welcome to our seventh happy hour. Woo! We are very excited today. We have made drinks. We have done magic. We have had dance classes. Wait, all tonight we've done them? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Amanda and I have done all that today. Well, tonight we have a very special treat. We are going to have a cooking class with Dewey, who is a personality in himself. He is from Bill Hansen Luxury Catering, and I would like to introduce him, but have him chat a little bit about himself. Will you unmute him so he can tell us a little bit about himself and about Bill Hansen. So hang on one second, Dewey. We are um, doing a little technical unmuting. Stand by. So you have to unmute I think yourself. you might have to Dewey, unmute. Will you right? unmute from your side, please, if you can hear me? There you go. There you go. There you yeah, go. Okay. You are. Right. Thank you. All right. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself, your history, and a little bit about Bill Hansen Luxury Catering. Well, I've been with Bill for uh, four years now. Uh, I was the executive chef at The Forge. Uh, prior to that, I've been in Miami for a long time. I've been working in restaurants since I'm 13. I was a dishwasher in the Jersey Shore, not the TV show, a little different. Um, and, uh, so I've always dealt with farmers in Miami since the 80s to now. And, uh, you know, I, I love working with Bill. I've uh, done corporate catering. I've done small restaurants. I owned a restaurant called North 110 on 110th of this game. Um, I work with Jeffrey Chatter, and Ian Schrager at the Hudson Hotel in New York. And, uh, you know, and now kind of there's this perfect storm that brought me to Bill where I get to incorporate the farm and table elements, the catering elements. And we try to bring like a restaurant aesthetic to a catering environment. And we really do a lot of custom menus, a lot of different things that go, um, I think, beyond the norm when it comes to a catering logistics uh, type environment. So, and, and I've worked with you, Nick, a few times. We've done some fun events together as well. So we, yes, we've had, we have a few hundred events together, which brings me to my next hundred. question. <laughs> Tell us about a, a, an interesting event. Um, share with the group an interesting event that, um, that you have put together that we have a good story. Go for that. Well, you know, you know, I think we all deal with clients when you have that initial contact and they want a concept, right? They want something that's interesting. And you're okay, you want a wedding. It may be a corporate event. Uh, they want something on the beach. They want someone coming out of the water. Something that's a little bizarre. But I, I felt that we, we met with a Polish uh, groom and a, um, a Lebanese uh, bride. So we had a combination of Polish cuisine and also Lebanese cuisine. So... We had like this like cabbage and pierogies and heavy kind of winter food. And then we had tabbouleh and, and light pan seared fish and things like that. So that was interesting to kind of walk that line between satisfying the groom's family from Poland and the Lebanese family. So I think that was a, a menu that was kind of interesting. We also had a Scottish Haitian wedding that was interesting. So we had Creole cuisine and Scottish food. Um, so those are two things that come to mind and, and, and executing pierogies for 400 people when we did like a stone crab, a stone crab and goat cheese pierogi. And then we have this, you know, really fun Lebanese food as well. So those are two things that come to mind that, that I thought was challenging for my staff. And I always say yes. And then we figure it out afterwards. And I think we all, we've all been in that situation. So that, that definitely is something that to this day, I think my staff reminds me of that a lot. So. Well, that's what it's all about. And a lot of the people on here have done many events and it's kind of all about adapting to our environment and to what's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's all about the fun of all of it. So I'm gonna turn it over real quickly to Amanda before we get to our um, item of the evening. Go ahead. Well, one, I really want that stone crab uh, yogi now. Thank you for that. Um, Came, also, out Came out great. <laughs> for those that haven't been with us before, um, Dewey's going to present, talk about the ingredients, and give you a play-by-play -play of how to make a nice, delicious meal. But if you have any questions throughout, if you need any suggestions, if you don't have a specific item, text it or message, not text, message uh, Nick and myself, and then we will relay that to Dewey. We're going to keep everybody on mute, and it's just going to be the Dewey show, and then we'll go from there. So without further ado, <laughs> Jeff Dewey. All right, thank you. Well, we're doing a few things today. We, tomatoes are, are in season, um, so we're happy about that. We have some fun heirloom tomatoes right here. Uh, we have some aged red wine vinegar, some extra virgin olive oil, uh, some organic chicken breast, uh, some arugula, 
And then a little surprise, I, I have some pizza dough uh, and also some Sullivan Street bread that we got uh, up the street. Sullivan Street's been our bread provider since they came down from New York. Great bakery. Um, I wanted to also bake a little focaccia and olive oil, salt and pepper, throw it in the oven because I love a salad with some warm focaccia or something like that. So that wasn't on your list. That was one of those chefs that, you know, where they change things at the last minute and they just start doing something. So I kind of felt like doing that. I think my staff would understand that part. So, but we're going to do a little bit in reverse. We're going to do our chicken breast, our focaccia, and then we're going to go into the salad because we want to get the chicken in the oven. And then we're adding a little bit of Florida to it. We have some guava juice that we're going to deglaze the pan with the chicken. Um, and then we're going to add a little bit of garlic, a little bit of red onion into there. So let me get going with the uh, focaccia first. We're just going to take, now, I think some people may tease me about things like this. This is a sizzle plate that I've had for about 25 years. Um, it's really ugly. They call them sizzle plates. If you go along 13, 14th Street in Miami off of Biscayne, there's a restaurant row of just restaurant equipment. I suggest going down there just to check out some of the stuff they have. So we just want to brush it with the oil, then a little salt and pepper on top. I'm using kosher salt. We have some Parmesan Reggiano. Julie, if I could just interrupt you for one second. One of our sure. first questions is um, how much do we pre uh, preheat the oven to for those that are cooking along with you? 400 degrees. Okay, perfect. Back degrees. to you. Okay. So, and I, and I have a confection. I'm using 400 at confection. If you don't want to use confection, I would do 450. Uh, so right now we're using 400 with a high confection fan. So come on, Dave, come over here. So we'll just pop this in the oven. All right. <laughs> Get that going. Now we have our chicken over here and some fresh basil that we chopped up. Um, and again, I like to use local, even the China we're using, we're using from a company called FOH, which is uh, FOH China. They're located in Miami Shores. I've, I've known them for quite a while. They do really custom fun plates. Even this plate that we have here with the different compartments are fun for stations and buffets and things like that. So we have our chicken breast, so let's come over here. And then, Dave, if you could show them, I happen to have a chalkboard here next to the stove because I need to write things down because I, I change things all the time. So my kids and my, and my staff say, okay, please write it down, Dewey, because we know in 20 minutes you're going to change it. So, so we have the heirloom tomato salad, basil crusted chicken breast. This is a replica of our Deco production logo and DMCs right here. So, Are you available to be an art instructor as well, Dewey? Uh, a God, that my daughter painted that. You don't want me painting anything. Um, I'm, I'm much better, much better cooking than as a painter. So, <laughs> so we have our chicken. Now, when, when you're sauteing, you know, I like using nonstick pans that have a metal handle because I love throwing things in the oven. I've thrown the, the pans in the oven with the plastic handles. It doesn't work out well for some reason. It doesn't, so I, I very, really much advocate of metal handles. So we get our, hand, our pan already hot. A little bit of olive oil in here. All right, so we have our fresh basil and we have our chicken breast. And you want to hear that sizzle. Again, these are free range, uh, hormone free chicken breast. A little salt. A little pepper. And now, Dave, let's go back over here. While that's sautéing, we have a little trick. All right, now, for those that have an onion, you already chopped it up. I didn't chop this up yet because I like doing that whole chef thing where you go a couple slices this way and then a couple slices like this. So when you cut it, you get a nice dice like that. Yeah. Or for those that have children, make them do that so they can cry with the onion. All right, so you have some onion here. Now we wanna add the onion halfway into the chicken. So Dave, we're gonna come back over here. All right, so we're gonna check our chicken right here. You want it a little browner than that. There we go, that's getting pretty good. We wanna throw our onion right here. And I did split this chicken breast in half a little bit. I'm gonna lower the heat. We start with a high heat and then we back it off a little bit. We're gonna add our basil, fresh basil. Okay. 
Well, now that's the color right there, nice brown color. And now a little more salt and pepper on the other side. A little more basil. All right, now the fun part, we have a little bit of guava juice. And listen, now I don't expect anyone to squeeze their own guava juice, so we did buy some guava nectar at the store. But we want to finish that with a little guava right on top, a little taste of Florida. And that could glaze the pan. The French term is called the fond. All that caramelization on the bottom, F-O-N-D. Now we're caramelizing that. All right, now that liquid actually is coming off and it's making it a little brown. We're going to take the whole thing, pop it in the oven. All right, there we go. And now for those that have Alexa, Alexa, set timer for nine minutes. Okay. Okay, all right. So now we're gonna come back over here. Okay. So now while, so we have the chicken going, we have our focaccia in the oven. Now we have some nice organic arugula. Listen, it doesn't have to be organic, it's okay. I happen to like using it, you don't have to. We have aged red wine vinegar, a little bit of garlic. We have these very nice heirloom tomatoes. Again, tomatoes, let them sit out at room temperature. Try not to put them in the fridge. Now after three or four days, if you wanna stop, the ripening process, pop it in the fridge if you'd like. But for now, these are nice and ripe. Cut it in half, take that part out here. All right, and we just wanna cut some wedges like this. Now, if you wanna slice it, it's fine. The wedges tend to hold up a little better. We wanna throw it right here into the arugula. Okay. Now we have some garlic. I like using this part of the knife. Don't buy the pre-chopped garlic, okay? I'll get upset. I'm gonna find out where you are. I'm gonna make fun of you. So please don't buy the chopped up garlic. Get fresh garlic, peel it. Now just make a couple slices here, a little chef trick. Take some salt, throw a little salt on the cutting board. And then this part of the knife, All right, there you go. And then we just want to smash that garlic up like that. That's what we're looking for. Have a small bowl here. Now, if you want to use roasted garlic that you may have some roasted garlic sitting around, roasted garlic is fine, it has a nutty flavor. Louis, this is, a great new, this is a great new trick. Thank you for that. That garlic, You're welcome. Have, You're I welcome. won't buy bottled anymore, I promise. Uh, if you do, Nick, I'm gonna be very upset. Just, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna be very upset, sorry. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we have the red wine vinegar in here. All right, let's go back to our olive oil over here. Okay, now I happen to have some rosemary that I picked earlier um, that I have. So I'm gonna add a little rosemary. It's not on your list. Again, those, those chefs that keep on changing things, but we're gonna just add a little bit of fresh rosemary. Chop that up. Just a rough chop. Throw it in there, okay? A little salt and a little pepper. If you wanted to add crumbled goat cheese, we are using burrata today. Crumbled goat cheese is cool to add in there. Um, what a Parmesan Reggiano, instead of shaving it or, or ground, you could actually dice the Parmesan, the dicing into the arugula. The arugula is a little bitter. Then you have that sweetness of the cheese. You know, I like that. It tastes really good. So this vinaigrette, this is a very basic vinaigrette. And you want to emulsify it or put it into a blender for a larger group, fine with that. And then I know no one you know, has this at home, but it's, it's really important to make people taste food. So I happen to have tasting spoons in the kitchen. I don't normally have that in my kitchen, but, but I have them today. So we just want to make sure that it's seasoned. Okay, a little more salt. One thing they say about tomatoes, uh, tomatoes are acid. Acid eats salt is the expression. So you may season this and toss it maybe 15 minutes later as the waters come off the tomato. You may have to adjust the seasoning. So it's really important to taste as you go along. Okay. 
So that's our vinaigrette right here. We have our tomatoes here. We're gonna add a pinch of salt and pepper into the actual salad. We have this really cool burrata that we got. So one thing about burrata, um, which is really, it literally means butter. It's, it's, it's very liquidy. So we wanna keep it whole. You, if you are gonna slice it, you wanna slice it at the last possible minute. You gotta get a lot of liquid coming off of it. We're gonna play around with two different presentations. So the first presentation, uh, we have our vinaigrette here. Tossing our vinaigrette into here. If anyone wanted to add, add a mango to this, by the way, or a green mango and a tomato, I think it goes really well. All right, so you have your tomato and arugula. And I love using a slanted bowl like this for a presentation. So you have this nice slanted bowl. All right. Kind of summery, light salad. So you have a tomato there. Now we're gonna check our focaccia real quick while we're getting that ready. Cool. That looks great. All right. That actually souffled up like a souffle. Like it looks like a tart or something. That's fun. It looks amazing. Like that. I wish you would have told us that we were making focaccia tonight. Big really. tease. <laughs> well, well, it was. I, you know, it was. It was a random. Listen, I'll be honest. I, I bought the thing. pizza dough. I bought the pe the the uh, the uh, focaccia, the pizza dough. It's just pizza dough at Publix in the bakery department. It's so so good. that's what we did. I think you and should. It, you know what? Focaccia. It works out really well. I think you should send the focaccia to everyone tonight. To their personal address. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a bicycle delivery of that. Oh yeah. Thank you, Chef. All right, you're welcome. And then over here, now we want to check our chicken out here. So we're just about there. So now we have the guava going on. All right, so we have all that liquid in there. Yummy. And we want to taste it. So we have the guava, and now here, just a little more salt and a little pepper. Okay. Now, this is really fun. This. Now, this is cool. We can just go like this and like this. And now, for our purposes today, we're going to take the burrata, cut it in half. Now, look at that. You see that liquid come out right there, All right? Really moist. We just want to place that on top right here like that. Then we want to take a little bit of that guava from the pan, that juice that has the flavors of the juices from the chicken, the onion, the basil, all that yummy stuff. We just want to put some of that like that right here. You would drizzle a little bit on the focaccia. All right. And that's a nice little lunch right here by itself. Now, what we could do here, we're going to take our chicken breast. A little slice here. And by the way, you don't need to do the fancy like cut on an angle chef thing. But it does look good though. You know, it does look good. A little salt, a little pepper. All right, so now you have the burrata. And now you have the chicken, and that's a nice individual salad. Now, let's say you were doing, you know, seven or eight people. Nick sometimes has 20, 30 people at his house. Um, so we want to take our tomato here and arugula. We want to do this here on top. Obviously, for a larger group, you could do a burrata studded throughout the whole thing. And then we have our Sullivan Street bread as well. Do you have a bakery in your house? Is that where all this bread's coming from? 
Well, I'm Italian, and it just goes it goes with it. <laughs> it goes with it. <laughs> it's always bread. <laughs> it's always bread. Oh, that was Alexa. Alexa, shut off alarm. All right, there we go. So we have this going on. So you have this. And by the way, if you wanted to make a chickpea uh, gluten-free bread, I mean, chickpea flour, which you get at um, Whole Foods or any other markets, there's a, a recipe for farinita, which is a flatbread um, from Italy made from chickpea flour, totally gluten-free with sage and things like that. And if you want to do gluten-free, you don't have to use the bread. You know, I just figured it's comforting, it's warm, it's yummy. So that's more like a, more like for a large group for sitting at the dining room table. Now here, so here you have your basil on here. That's kind of what we want. We want that basil flavor on the chicken. And if you wanted to add some roasted chilies, let's say you want to char some jalapeno, char the jalapeno right in your burner. By the way, if you have an electric burner, you can put it right on there. I don't know if it's going to ruin your stove or not, um, but I think the, the jalapeno, if you char it on, on the flame or on that and make it a chart on both sides, cut it in half, take the seeds out, and you can put a little bit of charred pepper on here for a little bite. All right, so. By the way, we're not suggesting you do that. If it ruins it, it's not Deco's or Dewey's fault. <laughs> Okay, so so we have two things going on now. We have the individual plated, and then we have this right here for a larger group where everyone can just help themselves. Wow. All right, and then we have that liquid, that liquid here, we're gonna put right on the bread of the guava, all the pan drippings from the chicken, the basil, the onion, the guava. <clears throat> this with a glass of like Sauvignon Blanc or champagne. I think it would work really well. Well, Dewey, I guess I know what I'm champagne. doing on the way. I've got to go to the store and get all the ingredients and, and create this because I'm starving to death and it looks amazing. Thank you. Thank you. For, and it goes great with Pellegrino. I, I do have to do a little plug for Pellegrino because <laughs> Pellegrino, um, I just have to do that okay. because they've been a sponsor with me and James Beardhouse. They've contributed to the hospitality funds um, over the years. Uh, they're just a great organization. So, and you know, of course, and we love to help people. So, so yeah, you have this going on favorite, here. So that's fine. Weird how that works. <laughs> that works. That works out okay. All right. My favorite. So that's good. Well done. So, so the chicken, if you wanted to do this chicken ahead of time, and let's say in the morning, you want to pan sear it, cook it and chill it, serve it cold. It's totally fine to serve it cold. Uh, I would still save those drippings and then use that on top or even mix it into the vinaigrette. If you want to use a pan seared snapper, like a yellowtail snapper, um, or salmon, let's say. It's totally fine using the same method for a salmon filet or for a snapper filet would work. Okay, so you don't have to use, or you don't have to use it at all. You could use pan seared zucchini or tofu. Um, and you could actually add the, the basil and everything into the uh, tofu and do it, totally make it vegan if you'd like. So I would just omit the cheese on the focaccia so um, it would be dairy free. I think taking the cheese uh, out would ruin the whole dish. <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> Okay. All right. And then, uh, uh, let me see now, what else? Um, well, I happen to be using a very cool cutting board. I think, I think Nick is aware of my cutting board. Um, this is made from ebony wood, uh, which is actually it's the same fret wood that Taylor guitar uses. And, uh, they bought this in Africa, uh, the wood, the wood company, and they're, they're paying living wages, sustainable farm with ebony. And so it's also kind of goes in touch with what we're trying to do as a company as well. Keep it, keep it local, keep it real, and have fun. So. Cool. Awesome. Well, I Any think, questions? Um, also, did you want to tell us a little bit about the meals from Bill Hansen that you guys are doing? Oh, I, I happen to have a menu uh, <laughs> right next to me that in my kitchen. <laughs> um, we're doing a $25 uh, delivery men uh, menu for a minimum of, 20, uh, minimum of four people, $25. Your video that. went out. Oh, my video went out? Yeah. Okay. Are we back? Nope. Not yet. Let we me see one you second. Though. You can hear me? Yeah. Uh -huh. There you, there you go. go. There you oh, go. You're back. All right. Am I back? Okay. You're back. Um, all right. So, yeah, it's a $25 a person menu, a minimum of four people. Um, there's Like this week, we have a lobster risotto. We have lamb, ch lamb chops. And we, we were doing this as a weekly thing, delivering to people's homes and offices. And it's something that's been very interesting for the summer as a whole other revenue stream for us. 
Uh, Mother's Day was amazing. Passover was great. And we're excited about Father's Day coming up as well. So great. Awesome. That's it. All right. Like so is everyone cooking? Any questions on anyone that's cooking? Did everyone work out okay on what they're doing? I think everyone seems to be pretty good. If you guys have any questions. Let's look in the let's look at the questions real fast. Oh. Um the only question was the wine. There was wine on the list, but did you use wine in the chicken? Um, I did. I actually had guava juice and wine combined. I didn't mention that. That's a good so question. I added guava. Yes, I did. Right. I you added were... uh, white wine yeah, and guava together just to, to include right. into one. But wine it... wasn't for drinking. <laughs> we just thought it no. was to drink. Okay. So there were a few we that did. asked what to do with the wine. Okay, so so put the wine in or drink it put now. The wine in with, with the gu or dr drink it now. I did add it to my guava juice. So I went to glazed it. I had right, guava so... and white wine in there. Okay. <laughs> And then another question is, uh, where can we find the menus that you were just talking about? If they want to purchase um, meals. Oh, okay. You can go to Bill Hansen, um, catering com, and there's a, there's a landing page for our, our menus delivery, or you can email me at Dewey at Bill Hansen Catering.com as well. And are they -E daily menus e or weekly menus? Are they weekly or sometimes we do them every two weeks? Um, you know, right now we're, you know, we had such a demand for tomorrow. Actually, we're doing deliveries right now as we speak. Um, so we do them uh, on a weekly basis. We send them out on Friday or, or Saturday morning for the following week. And if anyone wants to be on our email list, you can contact me direct, directly or reach out uh, to, through our website. So um, our Father's Day in the box, it looks like we've already gotten some activity and some bookings on that. Uh, Mother's Day, we sold out. Um, so, you know, I think this really for summer is a great little uh, thing to do for the summer. We can have little micro dining at your home or your office. So you can have a party of four, a party of 10, where we drop it off and you're basically can do whatever you want. It's all ready to go. All you have to do is heat and serve. Awesome. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically that is the end of our fabulous cooking demo. Um, Nick and I are so happy to finish out. If you wanted to see more of us, you can always petition to see our lovely faces again. <laughs> if you enjoy our happy hours. Um, but yeah, this is our final one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the series. Any other and final? Dewey, thank you so much. It was great. To, You're welcome. Uh, it's You're always welcome. good to I be like on. To, I like to say, thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to thank David as well, who, who, uh, who's a great videographer and uh, photographer. He uh, happens to be a neighbor that I call upon to do video now, and then I feed him. So, uh, ah. so it works out well. I feed David, he videos, and it all works out for his family and mine. So it all, it's, all, it's all neighborly. So we enjoy that. So. Oh, and then one more um, housekeeping note. If you guys want to post and tag Deco at Instagram or Facebook to show us your wonderful meals that you made tonight, or if you want more information of how we can do virtual meetings, info at decoproductions.com. Or if you want to also tell us that we're doing such a great job. Uh, right? Uh, <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining thanks, us tonight, guys. guys. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Dewey. All right. Bye-bye.